Hey there guys, I'm Lee Williamson and today I'm going to teach you how to use the post morph tag to morph between two splines inside of Cinema 4D. So without further ado, let's dig in. Right, so I wanted to animate this M spline into this table, tennis table, and I found the easiest solution was to use something called a post morph tag. Um, let's show you how it works. So the first thing I have to do is um, the the object that's got more points would be the table tennis table. So I think I'm going to work with the table tennis table. So take the table, you go into your tags, and let's find the post morph tag. So it's under character tags, and there's something called post morph tag. Now we're going to be animating the points on the spline. Um, usually you could animate um, uh, spline points with this point level animation, but the problem is you don't uh, get the ability to edit your curves with uh, the post morph tag you can. So let's show you how it works. So we check points because we're going to be animating points. And I'm going to double click this new pose and I'll call this M because we want to make it animate into a um, M. Now it's ready on edit. So I'm gonna go into my side view and I'm gonna turn that M on. What I'll also do is I'm just gonna put a protection tag on the M just so that if I'm moving the table points around that I don't mess it up. So I'll go and choose my points. And let's see, so let's move those Let's move all of this. Let's find an easy way to do this. I'll use my lasso selection and I'll select all these points. Press T on my keyboard, scale them all down so that flattens them out and move that all the way to the top. Then I'm gonna use my lasso tool once again on this side. Press T on my keyboard and flatten that out over there. Actually, no, you know what? I won't do that. Let me first move that all to there. And I can use my lasso tool again. And move that there. Uh, then you see these three points over here. So we can take one point. Let's see what's the best way to do this. Let me zoom in. And I can select this point and this point, press T on my keyboard and scale this out. Let's zoom out a little bit. Scale this out until it gets to the corners of the M. Then I can take, um, let's go back to that lasso tool, select that bottom bit, bring that down there. I can Select three three points there. Press T on the keyboard. Oh, maybe not that. Let's try these two points over there. And I can move them over there. And then just to make sure that they're all lined up, I can select them all again. Press T on the keyboard and scale them to zero over there. And I can do the same thing for this side. Select all these points. Press T on my keyboard, scale them all to zero, and press space on my keyboard and move it down to there. Uh, same thing with this middle point, I can bring that down there and select this point and select this point. Hold down shift on the keyboard so you have them both selected. Move them up, press T on the keyboard, scale them in, and then these last two points over here. Press T on my keyboard and scale them in. Right, so there I have my M now. So I'm gonna go back into my uh, perspective view. And now what I've done is I've actually recorded that table 
tennis table going from an M um, to a table tennis table. Now, if I click over here, press animate, uh, I can now animate that strength with the slider. So let's animate it. So I go onto my, uh, let's say keyframe 10 and I drop a keyframe and then I go to keyframe say 30 and I drop another keyframe. And what I do is on that keyframe, I pull it down to its uh, table, to the table tennis. So now when I press space on the keyboard, it animates out. Let me turn that M off because we don't need that as a guide anymore. There it's animating on. And now the next thing to do is if you right click on that radio button and go to um, show F curve. Currently you've just got your standard easy ease curve. Now it would be nice to have a bit of uh, anticipation of follow um, and overshoot. So what I could do is I could select this keyframe and make it go higher. So what, if you notice what it's actually doing is it's animating over, uh, it's overshooting at uh, its shape. And then the same thing you can do there is if you pull your curve in over here, you can also have it push further than the, um, said the, the shape it is designated to be. So what it essentially does is it kind of changes it to that new shape uh, of a table tennis table and then pushes even further past of it. So now you've noticed in the middle, it's going a little bit too far. So maybe my curve is a little bit too extreme. All right, let's see how that works. Boing, perfect. Now the next thing I wanna do is just whack this inside and uh, extrude object so I can do that where are you there we go extrude and now all I need to do is give it a little bit more depth let's say 200 and here we go we have our animated M to a table Boom. Oh, for whatever strange reason, that seems to be disappearing on the first keyframe. I wonder why that is. Have I missed something? Right, so I figured out the solution. Um, the problem I had was I hadn't lined up all my points. Silly me. So that's why the extrude um, objects didn't work. So let's show you what I did. So I click on the post morph tag. I uncheck use and then I select those points where they are not they're supposed to be showing the same position and let's find out where else there was any of those little kinks so there is another one there's T on my keyboard let's just scale that down to zero and I think that's sorted so click on my post morph tag click back to use let's click back to full view um, and see if it works let's click on animate boom and now it works perfectly right I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial thank you bye